welcome to this, our first um, virtual experience, virtual conversation for parents. Um, I'm Kim McGuire. I'm the coordinator for school counseling for Savannah Chatham County Schools. And today I have with me Teresa Kamizzi, um, who works with Coastal Harbor, who partners with the district on several initiatives. I'm going to let Teresa uh, tell you a little bit more about herself as well as um, the services that uh, Coastal Harbor offers to our community. Teresa? Thank, thank you, Kimberly. Again, my name is Teresa Gamitzi. I work for Coastal Harbor Health System here in Savannah. And, um, you know, this is just a great opportunity that we have here to be a part of. Um, at Coastal Harbor, for those who may not be aware, we have services for children, adolescents, and adults. Uh, for child and adolescents, uh, we have a, an acute stabilization program, which is a short-term crisis program where our patients are inpatient with us. Um, that is anywhere from about three to five days. Um, more might be needed, um, and that is certainly something that we uh, talk with the family about, the physician, and of course, insurance. Um, that is a program for patients that are in crisis, so they might be in danger of harming themselves or someone else whether it's through threats, behaviors, and also um, if they're dealing with some forms of psychosis. That could be hearing things, seeing things, but it's at a point to where it's severe enough to endanger themselves or someone else. Okay. So what we do is assessments uh, to determine whether our inpatient program is what is needed. Um, if not, we certainly then do what we can to help connect um, patients, uh, whatever age, with individual providers throughout the community. Um, so we want to make sure that if we're not the first step, that's okay, but we do help them on to that next step. Um, we do have an acute civilization program for adults along with partial hospitalization and in intensive outpatient for adults. Um, that's cer certainly information we can give at a separate time, or you can go to our website, www.coastalharbor.com to gather more information. Um, also, our admissions office um, is more than willing to answer any questions in regards to our program and, and processes at any time. So you can certainly reach us at 912 354-3911. Um, ask for admissions and any questions in relation uh, relation to our um, procedures, programs, they'll again be more than happy to answer for you. And okay. I've been with Coastal Harbor, just a, a little bit more on me. Um, <laughs> I've been with Coastal Harbor for about five years. I've been in the field for about 15 years. Um, working with patients um, in the substance abuse and mental health capacity. I've been out of clinical face-to-face um, -face counseling, so to speak, for about 12 years, um, but I've had this wonderful opportunity with Coastal Harbor. Um, I, I uh, came in with their admissions for children and adolescents, and I've worked with the acute admissions along with the residential admissions, um, and, and now have the, the opportunity to be out in the community working with wonderful people like Kim um, to see what we can do to be a big support and a great resource for our community. Okay, well that, that's great. Um, and it's, it's great to hear about the other side because sometimes people hear um, about Coastal Harbor and it may um, elicit some emotion, you know, um, or seem like a scary place as opposed to a place that offers um, help and support. So I think that information was really great for um, parents and our community to hear um, so they know about all of the services that um, you all provide. Um, the reason we're, we're here today, um, of course, we're going back to school, um, you know, for a lot of our kids and our parents um, and even our educators out there, uh, just given this time that we're in, it just elicits a lot of emotions, um, dealing with feelings of anxiety. Some people are just dealing with disappointment um, because here within our school system, we are not um, going back face to face, but we are doing a virtual start. Um, our educators have done a great job of trying to make that as much um, like being in person as possible, um, but we want to make sure that everyone is safe. And so um, just to kind of get us started, you know, just thinking about all of those things, um, what are some of the things that you think parents can do to try to help um, ease their uh, child's anxiety about returning to school, especially in this virtual environment? Um, it may not have gone well in the spring, um, but this is a fresh start. Um, 
So what kind of suggestions would you give to help uh, students and parents um, with that? Definitely. Um, definitely do your best to stay cool, calm, and collected. Um, we know when we're feeling emotions and we get stressed, our kids pick up on that. And mm -hmm. even if we don't feel fully confident in the new ways that things are going right now, let's do what we can as parents and guardians to help educate ourselves on the programs that the school is using, the teachers using. Um, so if we have that a capability, let's learn as much as we can so we feel more confident, there in turn our children feel more confident. Um, you know, if, if there's questions we don't, we don't know how to answer that our children ask us, let's be honest, you know what, I don't know how to answer that, but let's see what we can find out. And here's what I'm going to do to obtain the answer to that. Um, one of the things that I especially try to do with my children, um, you know, if they um, are feeling a little apprehensive is review some of the positive things from, from the prior school year. Remember this happened? Wasn't that a lot of fun? Right. Or you? I remember when you told me this that you learned this and you were just so excited to learn more about it. Things like that. Um, another thing is um, just if you can start early in setting um, a, a school structure or a schedule, so to speak, at home. Um, don't wait until the night, you know, the day before to start waking your child up really sure. early. You know, don't have it be like a night and day thing within 24 hours if you can. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, start a couple days before if you have that opportunity to do so and just start kind of getting their home schedule back closer than their school schedule. Um, again, so it's not a night and day thing. Check in with them on how they feel. Um, you know, approach that conversation. Um, start it. If they haven't brought it to you, say, hey, you know, school's starting back up. What are you thinking? You know, be open, be there for them to communicate. So if they do have that anxiety or apprehension, hopefully they'll be more apt to talk to us as parents and guardians about it versus not even having, knowing they have that opportunity to talk about it. Um, when, you know, first couple weeks of school, um, if we pick them up or if we have kiddos that um, are not attending virtually but are going to school and they're coming home or even those that are attending virtually, after their school day is done, check in with them on where they are at that point. Um, you know, you're going to see a slow um, increase in the confidence back with school again. Um, but it's going to be a rough couple of days for them, for the teachers, for the parents to kind of get, get back into it. So certainly um, just keep that line of communication open um, and just make sure that um, they know that you're interested in what they're doing right now and that you are there for them as a support. So if they are feeling um if they are feeling anxious or apprehensive, then they know that they can talk to you about that. Those are, you know, some great tips. One of the pieces um, that I heard you mention when you talked about those routines, um, I know one of the biggest pieces, even for me, when we were working from home, um, was just to get up and get dressed. Mm -hmm. every day. Um, you know, there's been a tendency to, I've, I've seen different things um, on social media about people having um, to expand their, um, what do you call it, yoga pants or, or sweatpants or leggings to expand that wardrobe. But I found that there was just something about still getting up and getting dressed as if, you know, I were actually going out that I think had an impact that made a difference on yes. you know, the mindset and the way that I approach things. And even with my own child, you know, making sure that you, you know, get up and, and you still establish even just that getting up and getting dressed mm -hmm. routine. Um, yep, even for the virtual, so you're right. Yep, mm -hmm. you're right. Even for the even for doing it virtually, still have them get dressed, put their shoes on. You know, yeah. it, it, it keeps them in that frame of mind. So I'm very glad that you, you made that comment, Kimberly. Yeah. And then just also setting those boundaries too, you know, as far as a start time, an end time, because there's also this tendency where we're just going to go all day long. So, you know, being able to take those breaks um, in between and those kind of things really make a difference. Um, our school counselors have put together some um, things that uh, we'll have on our school counseling website. Um, just a brief uh, little video that kind of goes through some of that and even gives some suggestions on um, schedules that you can try to, you know, set out um, as a way of helping um, 
with, with establishing that too. So just some really great tips there. Um, one of the things that you mentioned was about making sure that, you know, your child feels like that line, uh, line of communication is open. Um, so what are some ways that you can make sure that um, your child is doing okay or to find out, you know, are they really having difficulty with um, coping with this return? Um, you know, if you, especially if you have a teenager, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and much, it's kind of like, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> yes, yes. Talk to your well, friend. <laughs> so um, how can you gently do that without seeming overbearing? Yeah, well, definitely, you know, not always verbal, but um, body cues, emotion, uh, behavior. So more than likely us as parents or guardians, we uh, are aware on a daily basis how our kiddos, child or teens, children or teens, um, how they are and their behavior. So if you see a change in behavior, um, it can be anything from lack in pe preparation and getting ready for going back to school or getting ready for school. If you see something that's a little out of the norm there, I don't want to do it. It stinks. You know, if that's something that's not quite your child, then definitely that can be um, a flag right there. Um, emo their emotion when talking about school. So if they're getting really upset, even just approaching like, hey, how, what you think about the school you're starting up again? If it's getting very upset or getting very angry or just not even wanting to talk about it at all, that right there can tell us something is going on. So mm -hmm. then we are going to smoothly have to then address that. Um, and it could be a point to where let's bring in the school counselor and say, you know, I've noticed this with um, Johnny, for instance, or with Katie. Um, and, you know, I, I need your help in maybe coming up with some ways that I at home can do that. So really utilizing the counselors, but again, paying particular uh, attention to those emotional cues, those nonverbal cues. It could be, um, you know, through speech. It can just be um, I don't want to talk about that right now, or it, this is lame, or, you know, anything mm -hmm. like that, that I'm sure we've all heard a good bit of the time, but it's to where um, language and or body cues are just completely different from what we're familiar with. Um, you know, anything out of the norm, um, you, every child's different, um, mm -hmm. but seeing something like that can be a big flag and letting us know that something is up. Um, yeah, changing subjects, you know, a lot of the time, um, I, I would just say in regards to that, just completely having the com topic of conversation changed, changed away from what we want to, to, uh, discuss. So, um, and just, uh, great points because, um, one of the things that uh, while we were doing some research this summer and trying to come up with some things, um, especially around the topics of social and emotional learning, even for our staff and our counselors and things, um, one of the uh, resources I found uh, talked about non-corona um, or non-coronavirus uh, conversation starters. Um, and so <laughs> with parents, a lot of times, the way that you find out what's really going on is by starting the conversation on something else and it at least lets your child know that you are willing to engage with them um, in you know, conversation and, and just that you're interested in all parts of their life, lives. Right. So then they feel more comfortable expressing that part that is difficult um, for them to express. Um, and that can be difficult as a parent because uh, we're even dealing with our own things. So, you know, um, as we're, we often miss things with our children sometimes because of things that we're going through. So it's important too to make sure you have that resource or that outlet um, so that you have someone to bounce some ideas on off of, um, that you're, you know, doing that self-care, you know, making it a family activity, even if it's just for a five minute walk. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and help open the door to conversation as well. Um, in a way exactly. that you're so um and, and just when we talk about that engagement, um, you know, a lot of kids feel isolated and you have mm -hmm. parents, I've seen the full, you know, gamut, especially since things have kind of um, opened back up. Um, you have some parents, they, you know, have little groups and they are interacting with one another. So those kids get that social engagement. 
whereas you have others who aren't quite comfortable um, for very good reason with having their children interact with others. Um, had a conversation um, or saw something from a parent that said, you know, her child got invited to um, like an outdoor party or something, but, you know, the parent was not comfortable in doing that because they have um, other children at home who may um, not fare so well if they were exposed to the virus. Um, and so that was difficult for the parent. Um, so what are some things you think um, our parents can do to try to help their kids not feel so isolated and for the parent not to feel bad that, you know, hey, they're not comfortable with that particular risk? Sure. Well, and, and going right off of kind of what you just said, if you know, invited to do an outside activity together. However, a parent doesn't feel comfortable in having their child do that. So unfortunately, missing that event, but how, the parent can um, do a new event virtually for their child and the friends. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with um, schooling being virtual now, you know, most of us are, um, are able to have access to devices to where, you know, we can get on the internet, uh, we can get on Zoom or Duo or Google Classroom, you know, uh, whatever the, the method is that the school and the teacher is using. Um, or even um, Kids Messenger. I know that's something that has come in too, to where it's safe the parents have access to the conversations and you pick who you allow your, your children to be involved with, but setting up like a virtual playtime um, mm -hmm. to where those specific friends that they get along with, or even maybe some new friends, um, you know, having access from the school through the teachers of maybe in how to get in touch with a par another parent's email, setting that up for your child, you know, still keeping that interaction, but keeping it in a safe capacity. Um, so um, I would say that's definitely something that hopefully then, um, it's not going to be literally face to face, but they still have that opportunity to see their their friend's picture. You know, they see their mm -hmm. friend's you know, video, and it's still maintaining that communication with them. Um, also, you know, with that, and if it is to where there's brother or sister or siblings or even other family members, parents or grandparents that are in the home, as to where it is unsafe to have that, um, you know, high potential if, you know, there are outside activities that are being um, involved with, um, it, it is just um, doing what we can to just um, remind, you know, our child, even though it's hard, but letting them know that it's not just them, you know, it's mm -hmm. all of us together, you know, we are changing some things around right now due to what's going on, but here's something we can do, henceforth, the virtual play date or the virtual meeting, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever method, um, device that you want to utilize, but starting with some of that, if we haven't already, mm -hmm. um, if there are, you know, a lot of schools now with the pandemic, you know, a lot of sports aren't being involved you know they're not being done this way right. um or even some clubs um that you know it, it's common throughout the school year to have so whatever is available you know talk with your children see if it's maybe something this year they might want to be a part of and especially if it's something that's offered virtually from the school um so trying new things in regards to that uh, maybe some clubs again if there is that interaction um, through the computer to where they can still be involved with the school staff and also their classmates, this okay. gives them another opportunity to do that. Um, also, just again, just continue to check in with your kiddo. Um, so you may not be seeing so much, um, but again, if you start to see through conversations that they're having, like, oh yeah, so-and-so scheduled this and a lot of us did this, um, they may not see something necessarily to you so much, but if you start to see a, um, a decrease in conversation or, you know, even behaviors, like we're starting to be more down, we're starting not to talk as much. When we do talk about so-and-so or this is, yeah, everybody's having so much fun. You know, let, definitely listen for those verbal, verbal cues, um, mm -hmm. but let's brainstorm with some things that we can do to then counteract some of those physical activities. Yeah, I think, you know, that's really important. Unfortunately, right now, you know, a lot of us are having to make hard choices. Um, and I think, you know, even sometimes to tell kids, well, you know, as far as when is this going to end, <laughs> you know, we thought that we would be past this by now. Um, that just has not happened. And um, 
it can just be difficult, you know, right. to keep saying, well, it won't be this way always. And it's like, okay, but when? <laughs> um, exactly. But, you know, it is, I think, a lesson in um, for our kids and in, in what we do as a way of um, helping or protecting others mm -hmm. um, and showing that we care about others um, and, and just learning, you know, something about sacrifice lessons that, you know, will carry them on into adulthood, um, you know, as we think about um, giving back, um, you know, and even having those conversations kind of leads into the next point, you know, without uh, making your child scared without watching the news 24 seven, which, you know, I, I've even had to say, okay, wait, no, even if I turn to family feud or, you know, uh, a different um, something else, or just allow music to play. Um, how can we encourage our kids to um, adhere to the safety precautions? Because hopefully, you know, we would like to be able to come back when it's safe. Um, mm -hmm. But that may mean um, adjusting or doing, you know, things differently, um, wearing right. the mask um, in class, not being able to um, shake hands or touch, you know, um, items that belong to someone else or um, just having that interaction. So how can we talk with our kids about that in a way that does not make them even more anxious? Right, right. Um, well, definitely um, be truthful with them, but age appropriate. Um, so, you know, let them know that, yes, there are things going on right now that are not normally what we've seen in the past. Right. However, it's not the end. You know, this is what we're doing to maintain that everyone stays healthy. Um, you know, it's where, um, I mean, we've even learned a little bit, yes, this is a virus. And the, in, the, mm -hmm. in some ways, it is similar to other viruses that we've dealt with. So, flu, strep season comes around, you know, other viruses that we see on a yearly basis. Right. Um, what do we do there to try to stay healthy? We sanitize, we wash our hands periodically. We're careful with that in regards to what we touch. Um, generally not very often masks are worn, but now they are. That's just another way that we've learned um, as a mm -hmm. society that is helping to keep us healthy. Um, so letting them know that yes, there are things going on, but let's talk about that. Are you nervous about anything? Um, if you are, here's what we've learned together. Um, school, you know, for those um, schools that are back in session in person, mm -hmm. um, Check in with your child, um, you know, especially beforehand, what are their apprehensions? Let them know what the school has communicated with you in regards to what is being done at school um, that will help to keep them safe. Um, when you pick them up from school, <laughs> excuse me, or you check with them in the evening, how was your day? What did you learn about this? Now I want to quiz you on why are we doing some of the things we're doing? So kind of bring them into what have you learned about this? It's a learning opportunity. Why are you washing your hands a couple times at school? Or, mm -hmm. um, you know, why are you wearing the mask? See what they can recall um, and kind of make it a, almost a, a learning game, so to speak. Um, another important thing, you know, hopefully so they're not just anxious at school, hearing these safety precautions on at home. Mm -hmm. um, not just having it be a school thing as to where they're washing their hands often or using sanitizer or wearing their masks. Um, you know, some things have gotten more lax with what we're hearing um, outside. And since in some cases they're getting more, um, not so severe, but they're, you know, it's more intense a little bit, so to speak. Right. Um, right. But if we can carry on a lot of those safety precautions, at, those health precautions at home, there are children are going to see that, okay, this is all, it's not just us kids at school or just at school, this is occurring, but we're all having to do like my parent, my mom has to do this or mm -hmm. my brother has to do it too. You know, um, we're, you know, we're doing it to keep all of ourselves safe. And it's that reminder too, is to keep our loved ones safe. Um, but they just see that they're not the only ones that are having to do this, do, you know, utilize these safety precautions. They see others doing it too. And they're seeing that we are protecting one another. Right. Right. Um, and, you know, when I think about all of these things, it's like some of this stuff we should have been doing anyway. <laughs> um, you know, the piece about washing your hands frequently and, you know, all of those things. 
Um, so, you know, as we adjust, not just looking at this as, oh, this is something for right now, but, you know, really talking about, yeah, this is something we probably should have been doing. You know, mm -hmm. um, we just were not in the habit of doing it. However, um, learning experience, this is something we can carry on. Um, and, you know, for the reasons that it will help protect us um, and keep yes. us safe. So just um, talking about that piece, you know, no, it's, it's not too much. This, yeah. These are things that we could have been doing all along. So, yeah. um, you know, speaking of uh, that protection piece or um, being online, being in this virtual space, um, and, and even prior to coronavirus, we were dealing with um, cyberbullying that that had increased. Um, you know, we have a lot of parents um, or, or some parents who um, are not happy about the virtual experience because they don't like for their child to be engaged in that way just because of the uh, cyberbullying piece. Um, what, how can parents uh, really try to protect their children um, from some of those pieces, you know, I know one of the, the um, best things, um, if, if it's occurring in the class, make sure that you're informing that, that teacher, that you're reaching out to the counselor to let them know what occurred. Um, you know, also making sure that your child knows what's appropriate online um, and, and how they engage with their classmates and those kind of things. But are there some other things, um, you know, that parents and, and children can do um, when it comes to that? Yes, definitely. You know, I mean, also keeping in mind what you would do in the classroom, you can also do it virtually in case there are some, uh, you know, some, some programs that can do like a side room or something like that. Mm -hmm. If you hear of any bullying, make sure the teacher is aware of it, even if school is being attended virtually. So right. definitely the same thing applies there. Um, as parents and guardians, definitely being mindful and aware of the programs that they are on for mm -hmm. their school um, coursework. Um, make sure you're familiar with the program that they're using. Um, so in that case, if you see something out of the norm, or you, you, you look at something, you're more aware, okay, this is definitely not what should be taking place or what is not normal for this. Mm -hmm. um, supervise their online activity. Um, so if you see that they're starting to do some other programs or some other activities, um, again, t learn it yourself, you know, mm -hmm. find out what you can about what activities they're completing online. If this is something that's mandated by the coursework, talk with the teacher more about that and say, hey, is this actually part of it or is this just something that um, Johnny right. or Katie uh, is just has found on their own? Double check that with the teacher if you're not fully aware. Um, limit their online activity. So, you know, for some, it could just be only letting them on on the computer um, or online just to mm -hmm. do their coursework in the appropriate um, respects that they need to do that and the appropriate right. programs um, designated by the school. Um, there's some, uh, you know, I think just about in all computers these days and even um, browsers and things like that, parental controls. Yes. Set your parental mm -hmm. controls so that, you know, if, if there is that option to, uh, hey, I'm a little bored listening to the teacher. I just want to kind of like go look <laughs> for something on the web browser. Right. They can't just go to any website. You know, we do have access to that now. And with technology and how far we've come, a lot of the software, program software, even computer systems have things built in for us as parents to be able to continue to monitor what our children are doing while they're on the computer and online. But then also we can set some things to where they can't go certain places that we don't want them to go. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it there. Being fully aware, I think it's the main thing for, for that is mm -hmm. being aware of what your child needs to do for school and what their involvement is online, even for those of us that aren't that familiar with it. Um, let's, at least for our children right now, just make sure we're aware of for school what needs to be done and where they need to go online. But other than mm -hmm. that, um, utilize then what's out there, the resources, the parental controls, and also limit, supervise is very important. Right. Um, and I know uh, commonsense.org, I think, um, has some things out there about digital citizenship. Um, also, uh, there are some websites, um, I think, like BARC, 
Is that one of the, I think that's one of the apps where um, you can use it to kind of monitor and censor some of those um, sites that your uh, child is going on. Um, I know for my own child, um, I have a teenager, but I still have um, a timer. <laughs> we have a timer where after a certain you know time, you can't you know access your phone. You can't make calls. You just have to cut yeah. you know that part of it off. Um, yeah. But I yeah. think you know having those conversations and allowing your child to know, okay, this is appropriate. This might not be, and even having that door open where they can come and ask you, hey, I ran into this, but I don't know if it's, you know, appropriate or, or, or is this person, you know, saying something inappropriate? Um, because I read something the other day that said by us being online, sometimes in email and in other places, we say things that we ordinarily would not say in person <clears throat> because we have a little bit of extra courage um, with having that virtual space. But explaining that, you know, even though we're in, we're operating virtually, there is a real life component to this that will impact you, you know, even once we uh, get past this period. Um, exactly. And, and a lot of these things we put online are permanent. Yes. Um, people can come back and see them. You know, you have employers that are coming out and checking. Colleges are checking um, profiles. Uh, that was in the news. Um, a while back. So, you know, you just really have to be careful what you do in that space. There's a lot out there on the internet that, you know, is for good and, and can really be beneficial. You know, if you don't watch it, um, you can, you know, end up with something that um, may negatively impact you. So um, I think mm -hmm. that's, you know, really important. Um, so we've talked about some resources, um, you know, that are available to parents and their children. Um, of course, our school counselors, we have our school counseling website, which is on the district um, page. Um, schools have their own websites. You mentioned several resources available through uh, Coastal Harbor. Um, but what are some other places that parents can go and reach out for support if they find that, you know, perhaps even as a family unit, family unit they may need uh, counseling or um, they may need to reach out for their child. What are some other spaces um, where they can go or resources for that rather? Sure. Well, I mean, there, there, there's an, um, an infinite amount, you know, it's, yes. <laughs> you know, and there, and there's, and it's, and it's wonderful that there's so many people out there that are caring uh, more and more are opening up and starting, you know, each day, each week, each year, we're not gonna be able to get to all of them, but just a few in our local area. I just wanted to touch on okay. um, one is actually not in our local area, but it is something that it is national. And so there is access to this. It's, it's child mind. Um, there's yes. child mind Institute. They're based mm -hmm. out of New York, but it's a national, um, campaign, so to speak, to where parents can go on and get guides, get um, resources in, in, on, you know, regards to various topics, um, ask an expert, so to speak, mm -hmm. through their webpage. Um, so this is a tremendous, um, a tremendous thing that's been started, and it's grown to be a national thing, to where mm -hmm. if there is um, someone that has some questions on certain things and maybe is attempting to research themselves but is having some difficulty, they can go to this website. Um, and they also have a Facebook page and um, they can gather some information um, that they need or potentially have the opportunity to ask someone um, a question in relation to a specific issue or concern. Um, another thing as, as um, the school system is aware of is parent university. Yes. Um, you know, that's another great, um, just a great um, organization, so to speak. You know, a good thing that has started up to where parents have that opportunity for additional support. Um, so there's some programs and, and different things through Parent University that um, we can teach parents and parents and, you know, and, and parenting our kids, you know, really mm -hmm. to certain subjects and such. So that is tremendous. I definitely say those that can utilize um, for sure. Um, another um, collaborative, so to speak, um, an organization that is um, in a lot of counties here in Georgia are the family collaboratives. So here in Chatham, we have the Chatham Family Connection Collaborative. 
this um this um I, I say organization but it's a collaborative you know it, it, it is um finding information that we can keeping track and keeping a hold of it and making sure it is available out to the community this can be in relation to food housing um insurance um you name it and, and usually these collaboratives are made up of um entities and representatives from all um, areas of commerce, you know, throughout okay. the state. So it can be from the medical system, it can be from the um, behavioral health system, it can be from um, United Way is part of it, you know, for okay. example. Um, you've got certain hospitals um, throughout the state that in the different counties are involved. Um, those in the school system, you know, may, there might be a representative that comes. Um, those also that are power and light utilities, um, again, housing. Mm -hmm. So they keep track in the different areas and different counties of what resources are available to the different families, depending upon what is going on. They also, um, some counties, uh, most counties have uh, clothes that are available. Um, so you can donate to them also. They'll give clothes out or just for a very minimal, if anything, mm -hmm. have a drive, a clothing drive, food, you know, food <clears> drive again. <throat> Um, but have that um, capable resource. So I would definitely say check them out um, and see uh, what resources you can find out and they can um, certainly get that information out to um, certain certain uh, entities and, and people and programs. Um, lastly, the two things um, locally just wanted to put out there and they do have websites is the Family Promise of Greater Savannah. So this is a program that helps alleviate homelessness, also in, in giving resource information about certain things, medical providers, so to speak. Um, Chatham County, also Chatham County Safety Net. Um, so this is um, you know, definitely a program in a, a place that gives information and helps connect regarding healthcare and also insurance assistance. So um, definitely these are a few things I would say to start out with. Um, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to gain a good bit of information. The collaborative more than likely is going to give you a good list that right. is going to include a lot of this, but each of themselves is just, they're, they're great, um, organizations of programs that are out there that we, that the community is able to be supportive in the various ways to where issues arise. And it may not be something we think of on a daily basis, but for others, they deal with it on a daily, daily basis. So our community, uh, from what I've seen, has done a very good job in trying to adapt, address different um, issues that can be seen on a daily basis, especially with those uh, families that are involved in our school system. So those would be a few that I would highly recommend um, finding out more about. Those are all great. And um, we, um, as counselors, we're trying to make sure that we post that information on our site. Um, I know one of those resources, and I'm not sure if a mayor group is connected to the one that you mentioned with that database, um, but they sent out one that allows for parents to, um, if you're in need of um, information about jobs, housing, um, transportation. Um, so that resource is posted there. Um, you know, mentioned United Way. Um, United Way 211 has a database that you can you know, search um, and look for different providers. Um, those kind of things. You can reach out to your counselor if you feel like uh, while we do not recommend, you know, one particular counselor or one particular agency over another, uh, we do have information about resources that may either be free or at a reduced cost, um, places like the Front Porch, uh, yes. which can provide counseling. That's a great collaborative here in our county. Um, but your counselors can help with um, referrals and resources um, along those lines. I even heard um, one of the local agencies is starting a um, group for parents um, who may, you know, be struggling right now. And it's going to be a virtual group. Um, so we have that information posted as well. Um, if you're interested in, um, you know, joining or learning more about that. Um, I just think it's important for parents to realize the information's out there. Um, you know, don't get discouraged. I know it can be frustrating. You feel like I'm going from this person to this person, this site to that site. Um, can't they just all put it in one place? And, and there are some of those things out there, um, but don't give up in your search um, right, because right. there is support available. Um, you know, and don't be afraid to ask and sometimes ask more than once, um, you know, about that information, but then also doing the follow-up because um, while it can be scary, 
sometimes, especially with counseling. <clears throat> if, if, you know, people are afraid of what will happen during that process, they, you know, shy away from it, but it can be very beneficial, but it does take a while to go through the process. Um, yes. It's not an overnight thing. Um, <laughs> just like getting to where you are, where you find yourself did not happen just like that. Um, it took right. time. And so being willing to um, go through um, those steps to get the help that is available and that you need is just so important. So, um, well, I think we've covered quite a bit here, um, a, a lot for parents to, you know, have access to. Um, at the end of this presentation, we'll, you know, put up some uh, screens that will review this information, um, you know, for you. Um, it will be on our website so that you will have access to it. Um, and I just really appreciate um, Teresa's partnership. Um, what, about a year or two now, I think, mm -hmm. we've been connected. Um, yes. And, you know, running into each other and just always has been supportive, even with our schools going out and doing sessions um, in our schools. So just thank you for the work that you do, um, for your commitment and your partnership. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Kimberly, and uh, thank you for allowing us to have this opportunity to be a part of this. Uh, we want to be a good support and resource for the school system and for the community and for parents. So, you know, we're here to help. Um, you know, certainly we can always answer questions. Um, parents can always give us a call if there's anything that they're not quite sure about or they just they need to ask somebody. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. And, um, you know, look forward to our next sessions. Uh, we're going to be doing some things um, dealing with careers and um, colleges and just some different things, um, even including additional uh, mental health and uh, topics, social emotional learning topics that we'll have out here. So just stay tuned um, and be safe and be well. Thank you.